Okay, Bob graduated in 1980 with, uh, with a bachelor degree uh, from Penn State University in structure design and construction. Uh, he grew up in Philadelphia. Uh, he was the f uh, his, his, first, his first job was, uh, was designing a crane for a Grove Manufacturing, and then he moved to Maryland to work as a, as a designer for Bechtel Power uh, Corporation. He has been with uh, Maryland State Highway for over 20 years. Welcome, Bob. Okay, anyhow, had a very large project. It's our biggest one in remedial, as far as Maryland State Highway Administration. But anyhow, I, I end up being the, the lead designer and the uh, manager for the Cumlin Viaduct, which is 44 span bridge that goes to the city of Cumlin. Anyhow, you can see by the slides starting up with, there's two bridges involved. You got the Cumlin Viaduct Bridge, which is to your left, and that's the uh, 44 span bridge that goes over the whole city of Cumlin, which is mostly parking lots, and then CSX tracks. And then the bridge to the right is Maryland 51, which is all tied in the original drawing. The Cumlin, the Maryland 51 is an industrial route that goes down, and that was part of the project. We, uh, condition state was condition state five, almost the four, uh, a lot of substructure work and superstructure and deck. The deck, as far as we originally, I wanted to do a latex overlay on the deck, but that was not included in the project. So that part was not done. We, the deck was still in good condition. Uh, as far as they had a mix eight, they applied to it. And that's why we didn't feel we had to replace it at this point in time. Uh, so with the repair job, actually our ratings are up to a seven now, so it was well worth the uh, project. System preservation, as Greg Slater said, we, you know, we look at maintaining, trying to maintain our bridges prior to, you know, trying to prolong their life before we have to do a, a full deck replacement or a, a latex overlay. Um, costs of this project, uh, these are factors that we considered uh, as far as replacing a bridge over the whole city of Cumberland, that was just out of question. It would be very expensive, so we chose to do the re remediation. And then safety concerns, you know, with even though the pier caps and columns weren't structurally deficient, you know, we still had concrete falling down and possibly, you know, a lot of car traffic underneath the bridges, you know, pedestrians walking. So we definitely had to do something about it. Let's do it this way. Project description, I'm not gonna read all this to you, but it was basically the two bridges I just said, Merlin 51, bridge to go over CSX, and then the Cumlin Viaduct Bridge, uh, which has three different ramps in each direction, exit and entrance ramps. Background of structures were basically built, 1965 was actually the Maryland 51 bridge was built first, and then 68, the, uh, the come on viaduct bridge was, they probably started at the same time, it's just the other bridges were a lot smaller project. That's why that got finished first. The, just a little bit improvements prior to that, uh, the other bridge had a major traffic action on Maryland 51. They only had like a concrete median strip, so they ended up putting a jersey wall in for a head-on collision. And then various HM overlays. That bridge is actually slighted within two years to have a deck replacement on. Uh, the common viaduct bridge is basically the whole thoroughfare through the whole town of 68. 68 has increased in traffic volume, so in order to do this project, it was a challenge of, you know, we would have to shut down one lane in a direction, uh, and we, the district and, the, you know, the locals uh, dealt with us, and we could do longer extent than what the contract was originally written as. And there was some substructure work in the past, they had the pneumatic applied mortar was uh, put on a lot of the pier caps and columns, but that has, that wore out. What we do now, instead of pneumatic applied mortar, we just go for the full concrete repair instead. 
contract facts, $14 million job was 790 calendar days. Turned out it was bid back in 2012. You can see I've been on a project for a long time. Uh, we, it was actually a rebid. There was a protest on the original job, and then we had to go back and revamp the plans and rebid it. Uh, ending date, there was a 142 calendar day extension was added to it just because we had change orders. And uh, there's three red lines. Red lines were involved with more after you clean and paint a bridge, usually end up doing in, getting some involved in more plating. So we, we had to address those conditions. The other thing is finger dams. There's two finger dams up here, 9 and 12, that we basically took them out and replaced them, and we went with a regular compression seal. So it was good to get rid of the finger dam, especially at Pier 9. The finger dam was deteriorating rapidly, and, and there was some repairs in the past, but it was banging at the time before we started the project. Uh, 42 RFIs, request for information if you don't know what RFIs are, and then 10 change orders, 3 million. But actually, what we had as our engineer's estimate, we were within budget on this project. 100 sheets of contract plans, which is a real huge remedial job for us. Usually we've done these DBMCs for various areas throughout the state, but this was a, a large project. Uh, the team, even though as a lead engineer, these are just names of people that basically were lead people, but it was a team effort. Basically, my office, I know just getting the plans out, you know, for advertisement, we must have had everybody working on uh, CAD drawings to, to get it, to make it happen, to get it out by advertisement date. So, and then the contractor that got it, Titan Industrial Service, which is a paint contractor, they, it was basically a 50-50. That's why they, a paint contractor could bid on this job. So it was a complete clean and paint. We talked about zone painting at the time, but we decided to go, you know, do the whole entire bridge. Bridge facts. I'll start off with the Merlin 51 bridge. It's a smaller bridge. It's a five-span bridge built in 65. And then it spans over Canal Parkway and CSX. And it's a major artillery road to the industrial areas. And then the picture on your left is kind of like before picture, and then on the right, it was uh, basically finished picture. Uh, it was just a zone paint on that particular project. The deck replacement job that's going to be coming out in two years, they'll do a complete clean and paint on that bridge. Uh, this is this. I'm just trying to give you a basic idea what the framing plans look like. They were they were done by Green Associates way back when, which is century now. And uh, you can see it was all hand drawings. So now it's a total different world now. Uh, the Maryland 51 bridge, I'm not going to read through all this, but basically it was, it was repair, pier caps, columns. And then we, we got into, instead of just doing that, the column was actually already repaired prior to this project. But we had to do a little bit more concrete repair. We had a little bit more spawn. But we decided to do two layers of carbon fiber wrap. The reason is, is because of, you know, with the salts out, especially in Western Maryland, it's heavily salted, especially with the inclines of the, uh, we decided to carbon fiber wrap the entire, both the, the Maryland 51 bridge and the Common Viaduct bridge. Uh, we had some steel repairs. Uh, the other thing is kind of unique to this Maryland 51 bridge, which we did do on the Common Viaduct was the district uh, maintenance what they were doing for if the deck is where you know starting to wear out, they would put planking underneath the soffit, all the way up against the ply would go up against the deck. So we decided to incorporate this in because we knew we weren't going to do a, a full deck replacement. So we we had to protect Canal Parkway. So we had designs of using a timber planking in order to protect that until the new design project came out. And then we did do some deck patching and some asphalt. It was a picture frame deck, which is concrete headers with asphalt in between. And we did do some repairs to the deck in the meantime. Uh, these are just some pictures. This was the zone painting. Can't really see the zone painting too much on the right hand picture, but it, it basically is like 10 feet out from the ends and then the exteriors got painted. Uh, concrete repair, you'll see the picture on the left. 
Of course, one of our inspectors used fluorescent green for mark and patching, which doesn't look too good to the public. But anyhow, you can see on the right how much better it looks with the, the new concrete repair. The pier caps were epoxy coated too, so we had blended that all into a, a white concrete texture. And then you'll see the pier caps and columns and crash wall. Crash wall, you could probably take, take it off with your hands. They were so bad. Okay, and then the deck, just kind of showing you some pictures. The old deck was on the left there. You can see the headers are breaking up. And then we, we did do an asphalt overlay on it. And that is actually starting to crack now. But we'll, uh, district maintenance will have to maintain it until we get the new project out. And then you'll see steel, a lot of steel on this bridge was the gussets at the cross frames. And then at the beam ends, you can see a typical retrofit with a bolted plated retrofit. Uh, and we basically took the gusset plates and took them out, replaced them. And then this is a typical example of planking. You either have the planking, you see the old planking, it rested on the flanges. When we had the old planking out there, it basically was all rotted out. So we just had to take it all out. We had to put the timber planking back in as part of the project because we weren't replacing the deck yet. And the Common Viaduct project, which is this bridge 01096 plus the six ramp bridges, 44 span bridge. This is just a couple facts. Uh, total main line, 3,121. Not quite a half mile, but it's pretty long. And uh, 45,000, that was back in 08. I, I guess I didn't change my slide of that, but it's, it's definitely has increased the traffic as a, out there. And 1,308 beam girder ends and then I think the columns, I know Roel, it's in the, in the uh, we, he actually did a quality takeoff for me, but we had 200 columns to repair and wrap. So it's quite a bit. And then spans 10 and th through 12, which goes over Wills Creek with fracture critical. And special features, we replaced the finger dams, which I uh, mentioned before. The um, city of Common Fire Department wanted dry hydrants. We had Whitman Reckhart, our consultant, design the uh, dry hydrants for us, which was kind of involved. And um, I think there is a picture in here that actually shows you a dry hydrant. It's actually painted red. They had a bad fire on a bridge before we started this project and they couldn't access to get the out as quick, put it that way, as far as the burning vehicle. So that's why the fire hydrants were put in. Uh, let's see here now. Just kind of give you an idea. The on the left was existing prior. The deck was on this bridge. We basically did a little bit of deck patching. Mainly it was curbs and and uh, headers, concrete headers, and um, replacing the uh, roadway seals, which were mainly compression seals because this is a simple span bridge. Um, and then. Um, what we noticed as we went through the project, which the, there was a change order that actually added more deck patching. There's a lot of coal trucks, logging trucks, heavy vehicles that go eastbound. And so we end up doing some patching. So in a consideration for the future here, it's, I think it still could be overlaid on this bridge, but it's uh, above me as far as make a decision on what we're gonna end up doing with the deck on this bridge. But anyhow, right now we're, you know, Substructure looks like brand new. The deck is still holding tight. It's actually a mix eight. It was an asphalt, was designed on it originally. They put a mix eight on it in 78 and it lasted a long time. So it, the overlay in this case really worked many years. Okay, this is just kind of give you an end. Goes from the west end, goes over Wills Creek. Fracture critical spans are like 10 to 12. And then uh, everything else is pretty much girders and stringers, and then uh, the ramps. You get into sections where all the ramps go in and uh, on and off ramps. Just kind of giving you an idea just the, I, how long the structure is. Contract plans. This was basically our past director, which just retired July 1st, Mr. Friedman. He basically worked us through this project. We, the original drawings were done with sectioning uh, I think through six sections, I guess, 
And then he said, we should do the contract that way. So that's what we end up doing. We end up dividing up. Contractor wasn't supposed to work in adjacent sections. It turned out that we worked with them during construction and we allowed them based on how much parking spots we could give the uh, public. So it was definitely a drawn, project was drawn with dealing with the public. Uh, these are just typical cross sections. You just have your regular uh, girder sections, beam sections, and then you get into uh, more of it with cross frames, diaphragms, and then this is a fracture critical where you only have two girder system, eastbound, westbound, and then you got, they call them uh, cross girders where you have like a big wide flange beam on the top and then you do have cross frames. And of course, as part of the job, we had to do repairs of these. And then this was just a typical drawing of our stack of 100 drawings. I think there was like 10 sheets of just this framing plan that we had to do with the various sections. So we organized the plans in those particular seven sections. And make it, try to make it easier for the contractor to read and of course their district inspection. And then we got, uh, this is just a scope, a lot more scope on the uh, Come on, the uh, come on viaduct because it's a lot larger structure and a uh, lot more steel repairs. And there was two piers, 10 and 11, that did not have drainage troughs, which protects our steel from getting rusted. So we, we ended up putting those two in. And fiber wrap, like I said, fiber rack. And then the drainage system, we, we basically were repairing different sections of the drainage system, but the district was part of the change order. We ended up modifying a lot of drainage system out there because it they were failing at the time but it used to be the old bridge was cast iron so this the district did a lot of pvc piping over the years let's see and then this was this complete clean and paint that was a big part of the project that was 50 percent of the project and just to give you an idea it was an old light blue color and then it turned out to be uh, our usual green that we paint the bridges which is, you can see the picture on the right, kind of shows you the new bridge, uh, new substructure or new rehabilitation, I should say. Not a new bridge, but it looks like a new bridge when you look at it from underneath. And this is this and steel defects, cross girders where you got corbels coming out for support the uh, safety curbs on the outside of the bridge. You got the, the uh, cross girders you can see in the fracture critical span. And then you can see how heavy deteriorated. We had issues with these little pedestals that were supporting stringers. And then you can kind of see with the new paint job, the only thing I couldn't find a picture on putting it together was uh, the actual repair of this. We, uh, it was a red line three. We, we had to repair some more stringers out there on the project. So you can see uh, these are typical retrofits that were done previous, but we did bigger retrofits or plating uh, during the project. And then the concrete defects, you can see spalling, not majorly, you know, nothing's going to fail. It just, you know, cosmetically doesn't look good to public from, especially underneath the bridge. And then you can see the new bridge. Basically, the carbon fiber comes out black. The, we put the epoxy coating paint on it to match the color of the concrete. So that's what all this is. And you see in the bottom right, there is a red fire hyd dry fire hydrant pipe, and that was put on three piers out there on that bridge, 21, 33, and 42. It basically, it's, there's no water in it. It's, uh, what happens is the fire company connects a fire truck to the, they have to have a fire truck to and from, up above and below, and then they just use that to send, it basically is located near a fire hydrant and they can connect up to there. Um, so that's, that's what the purpose is. But the thing is a design, when Whitman Redcart designed it, you had to design it for a lot of pressure. So that's why you can see how hefty they look on, on the pictures. I didn't get a, a final picture of the compression seals, but these are how the typical breaking up of the you know, of the headers. And the headers in this case was not a picture frame deck. It was a mix eight that was put on, but it was breaking up on the mix eight. Anyhow, that ends my presentation. And basically, we the last picture was, which I can't get back to, is uh, basically we got a partnering award 
at the MDQI conference, which was awesome. <laughs> so it was it was a district uh, district six um, maintenance or construction did a fantastic job for us. Uh, you know, and, and then the contractor, Bill Rothman, who was the superintendent for Titan, was just, he just knew how to run big projects. And if I didn't have a person like that doing it, plus his, you know, all those people that worked under him, it probably wouldn't have turned out as, as well. But yeah, we're within budget and uh, it, it was a very successful project. So thank you. Okay, thank you. I guess I'm looking time. <laughs>